Thank you so much for coming, and welcome to the Hudson Library and Historical Society. So my name is Charlotte Plank, and I am an emerging technologies librarian here at the Hudson Library. I started here in December, and my primary role here is teaching technology one-on-one -on -one and in the classroom setting. This is a little bit different for me, um, but I'm very excited about our, our program this evening. Uh, just a quick background about myself and this topic. I have lived without cable for a long time, um, and I haven't really wanted to purchase cable for a variety of reasons, but mainly because I don't like watching commercials. Uh, why am I presenting this topic tonight? Because I want to help spread the word about all the choices that are out there for streaming TV and movies. And I have heard from so many friends, family members, and countless others about how confusing all of this is. I hope to disassemble this topic for you tonight so you can understand it better. So a couple disclaimers. The information contained in this presentation tonight is my own personal knowledge and experience. This presentation does not represent the beliefs, opinions, or views of the Hudson Library and Historical Society or the city of Hudson, and nor do I work for or receive compensations or gifts from any company, organization, media outlet, or product presented tonight. So you're, you're in good hands. Okay. One more disclaimer. The choices for entertainment are just enormous. We are going to be covering just a small uh, sample of them, mainly major trends. And so we could have a two hour discussion about just one service. So I just wanna leave you with an overview of what's out there. So what is all the hype about cutting the cord on cable? First, what does it mean to cut the cord? It means unbun unbundling yourself from cable providers programming, the contract, the cord, and replacing it with pre-selected packaged channels with control of your own choosing through providers like Netflix, Hulu, et cetera. You obviously want to keep your internet connection or, or get an internet connection, but now without cable, you have greater control over your viewing choices. There are not a lot of long contracts and you can always unsubscribe. Many people are getting rid of their cable subscription and switching to streaming services. Why? because of rising TV bills and hidden costs, that cable gives you hundreds of channels, but you only watch a small selection of them. And entertainment now has become much more of an active experience, and people want to have control over what they're watching. In a recent article on the site Cut Cable Today, uh, they reported that these days it's all about streaming, instantaneous gratification, Push one button and voila, entertainment is piped into your living room via a variety of popular streaming services. So tonight, I made an outline for you to follow, um, and your handout lists most of the PowerPoint slides uh, for you to follow along too. So first, we're gonna talk about what kind of viewer are you, the difference between an active viewer and a passive viewer. We're gonna define streaming, we're gonna talk about how to stream to your TV through streaming devices. I'm going to briefly talk about media services. We're gonna talk about how you can stream through your library card. And uh, one number one question is how do I get live programming for broad broadcast? And I'm sure many of you like myself are interested in how to get live sports. And then the other number one question, cost and comparisons. So television through the years. The passive viewer is basically from the start of television to the present. So you had to sit down at a specific day or time. You, television came to you and you had little control. Um, this was transmitted via an antenna or later in the 1970s to the present through a cable or satellite subscription. The passive viewer asks, what channels can I watch? Second, the active viewer. Today, the active viewer chooses what, when, and where they want to watch. This began mainly with, with VCRs and DVDs, allowing post-live TV watching. Um, and then further, streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, among many others, moved this change. There are no or limited commercials. 
And you can stream on multiple devices, including not just your TV, but a tablet, a phone, a computer. The active viewer asks, what programs can I watch? So tonight, I will give you information to help make that decision. Remember, not all streaming in 2016 is active. So what is streaming? You might have heard the term streaming video, streaming audio. Streaming is a way to transfer data in a steady stream, like a river, so that it goes out and the user can watch it in real time as it comes in. So it's sort of like seeing everything live. So to illustrate, uh, bear with me if I call it the old days, uh, in order to watch a video through the internet, a video was downloaded, which meant essentially transferring a file from one device to the next. Took up a lot of time, right? And now, Streaming is sort of like live video footage. You see it, you consume it as it is transmitted. There is also a wealth of content available for streaming. It doesn't clog up mobile devices, hard drives, etc. So to stream video to any device, you have to have an internet connection. Uh, so one, one thing to note about this Many streaming services recommend a speed of five megabytes or more per second. That's talking about how fast you can download your content. So like I said about the streaming, how fast it comes to you as you watch it. If you've ever noticed if, you're, if your computer doesn't allow you to watch a YouTube video right at the start, it's, it's buffering or something like that. That might have something to do with the speed of your internet. And you can go to sites like speedtest.com to test your speed if you don't know it, or you know your internet provider, the bill that you get from them, it might have that on there. Um, so a lot of them recommend five megabytes per second or more, but if you think about who is using that internet connection. Say you have uh, four children and they're all, all watching videos at the same time and you're just trying to check your email. That is all taking up that bandwidth, right? So the recommendation is at least 15, meg 15 one five megabytes per second as a good foundation. So number two, you must have, in order to stream video, first an internet connection and then to a device to enable streaming. This can be as simple as, as a computer, like some of you have watched YouTube videos or other videos, but this is important if you want to stream on your television, right? So um, what's pictured here is, is I'll, and I'll talk about these in more detail, but um, you have something like a, a Roku or a Chromecast, We'll talk about that later, but that's important to note that you need that. And then three, some people don't understand, including myself, when you get a Roku or something like that, you still have to go forward and get a streaming service, right? So these can be either free or paid, but the, that's what I mean when I talk about Netflix or Hulu. Those are streaming services. So this is where you get the media content that you're going to watch. So how to stream on your TV? Your TV needs to be connected to the internet. So you can do this in a variety of ways. You can do this if you have a smart TV, which means that your TV is directly connected to your wireless or Wi-Fi connection. And this sometimes comes with apps embedded into the TV. Does anybody have a smart TV? Right, a lot of you. So I just got one a couple months ago, and I love it. I don't think I, I, I don't know how I lived without it. But it's not for everybody. I mean, it's, it's if, you, if you already have a TV, you don't need to go out and buy a smart TV. This is just one option. Um, second, if you have a digital TV, and sometimes you can also do it with an analog TV. We can talk about that later if you want. But if you have a di digital TV that's either smart or not, plus a streaming device, then you can access streaming video on your TV. So many people use their portable devices, like I said, their tablets, phones, laptops, computers, et cetera, only and have actually stopped buying televisions. I know I think this was the first TV that I'd bought in a long time, and the TV that I was using, I should have put a picture on this PowerPoint, is down in our basement now, and I don't know how we got it down there because it was very heavy, very small. Um, 
And uh, so it's it, it, it feels like a luxury now to have a TV uh, because I really used uh, my computer or my phone or something like that before that to, to stream. So not everybody needs to have a TV. You can do it on multiple devices. So talking about streaming devices, one thing I wanted to point out first is that including myself, may, maybe some of you are like me, in that when you hear the words Apple TV or Amazon Fire TV, you immediately think of a, of a screen, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean that there is a screen. The, the, what they say by Apple TV or Amazon TV, that is actually just a device, okay? So um, for the longest time, I thought that that's it included a television, it, did, it doesn't. Um, so that's, that's important to note. Um, first, I'm gonna talk about the, the most popular streaming devices that are out there. And in your handout, there's lots of information about this. You don't necessarily, I mean, if you wanna write notes, perfect, but all this will be also explained to you later in the handout. So first, Amazon Fire TV. This is very popular with Amazon customers. This supports HD video. So high definition video. And it requires a little bit of a faster internet because of that, because of the high definition video. It does support voice searching, which I haven't actually tried, but it sounds fun. Um, it, and it promotes Amazon's own content. So if you already have Amazon Prime, it might be really nice for you to, to get one of these. And if you already have a lot of video through Amazon, what I mean by video through Amazon is streaming video or uh, digital video files, um, then it might be something good for you. It's helpful, uh, like I said, if you already have a lot of content through Amazon. But then on the other side of it, if you aren't a Prime member, you might realize that they're promoting a lot of their content, right? So you just have to be careful with that. So second, like I said, no, no TV screen there. So this is the... <laughs> This is the Apple TV. Um, this is really popular with Apple devotees invested in the Apple ecosystem. So this uses voice searching and recognition through our friend Siri. And it's very popular, like I said, with Apple customers. Those that have an iPhone or an iPad, they can easily share what is on their screen and put it on your television if it's connected via an Apple TV, okay? So um, this also um, supports many different apps. And it's, uh, it's, like I said, it's useful in a lot of different ways for spontaneous sharing of your screens. One thing to note that it doesn't have Sling TV, which is a live streaming service that I'll talk about later in the program. And the other thing about this device is that it does have an inflated price tag, right? With that Apple on there, that they just jack it up a little bit. So that's something to note. So third, one of the most popular devices, and I think it has the largest share of the market for streaming devices, is the Roku. So pictured here is the Roku streaming stick. This is just one of the models that you can get through the Roku TV. Um, but uh, they also have boxes similar to the Apple TV. This is compatible with over 3,000 streaming apps. They have many different models, each slightly different, but they all use the same interface. Like I said, I have a smart TV, and actually the Roku is embedded in the TV. I really like it, um, just I find it easy to do. But they're all just a little bit different. So uh, this is just an introduction to what they are. So you have these three devices that are all very similar. The fourth that I wanted to mention was the Google Chromecast. This is different than the others that I've talked about in that it acts as a transmitter instead of a streaming device. So there's no apps involved if you boot it up or something like that. It's really just a way for you to, to Put one screen, say, on your phone or your computer to the TV or other device that you're using. So you, you have, there's no remote. A lot, of these comes, a lot of these devices come with remotes, like you see there with the Roku. Um, the Chromecast, you, you actually use your computer or your phone as the remote. So for that, it's a little, sometimes it's a little cumbersome, but I kind of like that in that it can be kind of spontaneous. So you have something on your TV, or I'm sorry, on your computer that you want to put on your TV, or say a video, 
you can put it on your TV through the Google Chromecast. And what's important to note about this one is that it's cheap. This starts at $35, and there's actually a deal at Best Buy. I don't know if it's still going on, but I got one for $30. So sometimes you can get it cheaper than that. So two honorable mentions for this list is some, sometimes if, does anybody have a Blu-ray player? Okay, some of you. So sometimes Blu-ray players also act as streaming devices. So not only for your, your actual Blu-ray Blu discs, but it can connect to the internet as well. So that can be really useful for some people. Um, but it's hard to really recommend one specific Blu-ray player because these can really differ from brand to brand. Another honorable mention is game consoles such as PlayStation or Xbox. These are really popular with gamers as, the, as they can act as streaming devices and also they can connect antennas with an add-on TV tuner to help centralize your TV viewing. So if you're, you want to watch live television, you want to play games, you want to stream, all of that, that might be really nice for you. However, this usually starts at about $300, so you just have to be careful if, if you don't want to spend that much money. Or, so you have these four that I mentioned and the two honorable mentions, or you can actually check out a Roku 2 from the library. We um, provide this for our patrons, and we have two subscriptions, Netflix and Hulu, courtesy to you from the, the Hudson Library and Historical Society. Warning, they're sometimes very hard to get uh, because we don't allow holds on them because we want people to come in and try them out. So usually they're just right in the front of the library. So you can ask me later if you have questions about that. So once you've figured out your physical product, your streaming device, either your smart TV or your TV with another device, we will need at least one streaming service. So this is, like I said, this is the, the videos that you're going to be watching. So when I talk about Netflix and Hulu, these are the, this is the media content, okay? Different than a device that allows you to view the content. So first, this is the global provider of movie and TV content. Netflix started in 1998 with mail delivery movie rental service that challenged rivals like Blockbuster. In 2007, Netflix began offering streaming video, essentially inventing the modern subscription streaming service. This uh, service starts at $7.99 per month, which is fairly affordable, and it, it also has original content. You may have heard of popular shows such as House of Cards, Orange is the New Black, Making a Murderer. I just finished season four of House of Cards and I, I, I enjoyed it very much. Um, so the $7.99 price point starts out with allowing you to stream on one screen and it doesn't support HD video. So when that price goes up, that allows you to, it, it, the price varies depending on the amount of screens and the video quality. There's a separate price for DVD rental. And like many other services, they give you a free month trial if you wanted to try it out. Some cons, there, like I said, there's no current TV. Sometimes it's hard to know what's available. That's because Netflix content, they don't actually say we have 100,000 videos available. They don't give us a number, which is kind of funny. And um, what's important to note is that Old material, old titles are exchanged for new titles every month. So you kind of have to be aware that sometimes something that you really like might go away. It usually doesn't happen for a while, but you just have to be aware of that. And uh, uh, one other thing to note is that there's no offline viewing. So some services allow you to download video and then watch it on your device later, say if you were going on a plane or something like that. Um, this is only with an internet connection. So another very popular one is Hulu or Hulu Plus. This is the leader in current television content. This is owned by 21st Century Fox, Disney, and NBC Universal, AKA Fox, ABC, and NBC. It has original content, popular shows such as The Mindy Project, Difficult People, among many others. The price of this starts at $7.99, and it goes up to $11.99 per month. 
But that actually depends on if you want commercials. So they start the $8 a month price point, but you actually have commercials in that. If you add $4 to that, then you don't have to watch commercials. Um, like Netflix, it offers a free trial, but it's not a month, it's seven days. And one thing to note is that CBS is not supported in this. A lot of people don't understand that. I, I didn't know this either until I looked into it. Um, CBS isn't supported in that. So if you really like CBS or their shows, that's something you just want to be aware of. Um, you can still access free content. When you go to Hulu.com, it's kind of funny. They, like a lot of other sites, they tell you that you should sign up for Hulu, right? Um, but if you just do something like Hulu.com slash free, you still can access free content, which is something I didn't figure out until I started looking at it. Um, and uh, although with the free Hulu, you only have access to a couple episodes per TV show. It's just nice to know that you can even, without signing up for any trial, you can try out Hulu. And it just announced in the last couple months that they will be rolling out a, a live TV service next year, but that would be pricey. It's around $40 a month. So just wait for that to come out. And I saw a couple hands. I would encourage you to write down your questions. I, we're going to have a question and answer session at the end. I know that this is, this is a lot of content, but I want to get through what I've prepared for you so that you have sort of a, an overview of what this topic entails. And I do want to hear all of your questions, OK? So third, Amazon Prime. Who, does anybody have an Amazon Prime account? OK, it's really popular, right? Why is it really popular? What, what does it give you? Free shipping. Free shipping. Right. It's wonderful. OK. So, um, so the, if you sign up for Amazon Prime, the, the traditional subscription is $99 a year uh, for that includes the two-day shipping, right? When I, and also they have a student discount that's actually gets you $50 off of that price point. So if you guys want to go back to school, great. Um, uh, so it's only $49 a month for students. And I actually had Amazon Prime for quite a long time when I was in school. And the kind of hilarious thing talking about this today is that I didn't even realize that it was not just two-day shipping, right? Amazon Prime also includes instant video plus pay-per-view and digital-to-own videos, including also photos, music, and a, a pretty large Kindle lending library. And that is all included in your subscription. Um, Amazon Prime also uh, uh, publishes, or they, they develop popular uh, TV shows such as Mozart in the Jungle, Red Oaks, and Transparent. Like I said, it's $99 a year, which averages, averages out to $8.25 per month. And there is a student discount. And actually, just recently, they added a monthly fee. So very similar to Hulu and Netflix, which is just month to month. And you could try it for a month and say, I don't want this anymore. They've just released that. So you will get the same privileges for your Amazon Prime account for a monthly fee of either $8.99 or $10.99 per month. You still get the free shipping, but if you just don't want to do the whole year, you can, you can uh, do a monthly uh, price point. There are some downsides. There are many, many TV shows and movies available with your, with your Prime subscription. But it can be really confusing because there's also a lot of video content available for purchase in addition to your subscription. So this is partly why I never really wanted to try out the streaming video, because I was never sure, is this included or not? So just to illustrate this, so when it says this is for Prime members. There's going to be a little banner. Like I've, I've uh, blown it up a little bit. So there's, you're familiar with seeing that check mark where it says Prime. There is going to be other video content. So you just have to be careful if you, if you have this or if you want to um, use this service that these shows that don't have, or movies that don't have the banner are not free. So you have to be careful because if you think about, so a $99 a year subscription works out to about $8.25 a month. If you keep adding on, you know, oh, I'll just pay $2 for this other movie, that could be expensive. Okay? 
Oh, oh no, no, no. They they tell you they tell you what the price is, but it's just kind of annoying. You're like searching for a movie to watch, and then you realize, oh, it's not included. So I was actually talking about this with some people. You can get uh, you know very new movies that have just been released to DVD through your Amazon Prime sub subscription, which you know can be a little bit cheaper than going to see the movie or waiting for the holds list at the library, all that kind of thing. So it, there are benefits to it as well. So um, we've talked about the three most popular streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon. There's a site called time, tomsguide.com that I've actually been using a lot for this research, research that compared the three. There are tons of articles comparing the three of these. Um, but he came up with Netflix as winning out only because they have the most content. They have an interface. What that means is how you find your videos, how you search for your videos. Um, that it's easy to use, right? Um, for quality, I, I think I forgot to mention, with Amazon Prime, you, you automatically get, with the lowest price point, high definition video, which is a nice thing, as opposed to Netflix, which makes you, makes you uh, pay extra for that. So that's why Amazon wins out there. In terms of how available things are, anything that is on Netflix is included in your subscription. There's no you know, $4 fee for the a most popular mov movie. Similar uh, is Netf uh, Hulu as well. In terms of the value, because of the two-day shipping, obviously it can be really nice. So Amazon Prime might be for you. But that's just sort of a nice comparison from tomsguide.com. Okay, so we've talked about the most popular streaming services. There are so many services that you could look, look into. We're not gonna talk about all of them, but just to, just to point out, I mentioned CBS wasn't part of the Hulu subscription. CBS has had their own service that you can actually buy. Um, it starts at $5.99 per month, which is pretty good if you, if you like CBS. Um, so that's something to be aware of. YouTube, my husband is a musician and, you wouldn't believe, now that we have a smart TV, how much YouTube videos he watches, just music and whatever he finds. Um, that's actually really popular for streaming devices. There, there's an app for YouTube that's available on these. So a lot of other uh, options for you to think about. And if you guys already have, if you still have your cable, there's also a lot of services, streaming apps, things like that, available with your cable or satellite login information, right? So sometimes you can get certain apps, like if you have ESPN, you can log in with your cable information and um, be able to access that. So again, if you have questions, just write them down and we'll, we'll talk about them after. So one big thing I wanted to talk to you about tonight is there are ways as patrons of the library that you can stream video content just with your library card number. So one of them that's that I really like is Hoopla. This is accessed via hoopladigital.com. And this is a site where you can instantly borrow free digital movies, music, eBooks, and more 24 seven with your library card. The patrons of the Hudson Library can borrow up to 10 titles per month. And although it's not, it's not going to be available as an app uh, to most of the streaming devices, you can watch it on your, you can watch it on your phone, on your tablet, and on your computer. And Hoopla does actually support uh, streaming via a Google Chromecast. Like I said, that was the cheapest device, the $35 price point, and um, that that allows you to to stream your Hoopla content to your TV. Another one that, that is new to me, but that I really enjoy, is Instant Flix. It's um, powered by Indie Flix. They can't, sometimes can't figure out what they want to call themselves. So you'll see either Indie Flix or Instant Flix. Um, but this is a, a service that you can enjoy for free. Over 7,000 high quality shorts, features, documentary, documentaries, classic TV shows, and web series from over 85 countries. So this is a lot of foreign language content. And this is very widely available as an app through Apple and Google um, or on any internet connected device. So on my Roku, I'm able to add the, what they call an in indie Flix channel, it's not instant Flix, um, to my Roku and I'm able to search videos directly through that, again, for free. 
Um, oops, we went ahead. Don't want to do that yet. OK, so um, just to, to recap how to access those, you might have already done some of that, that streamed some content. Um, so there's Hoopla, Instant Flix, and then does anybody use OverDrive? Love OverDrive, right? I walk a lot, so I listen to audiobooks all the time. One thing that I didn't know until recently, um, well, no, I knew that as a, as a um, worker at the library, but since I just started in December, the library I worked at before, we didn't actually have video content. And OverDrive supports streaming video as well. So to access these services, you can start by going to hudsonlibrary.org. And then in these nifty little uh, drop down menus. If you click on, if you um, just hover over download it, all your video content is accessible right here. So you have Hoopla, Overdrive, and Instant Flix. So, number one question live programming. So, many of you are probably here because you want to know well, if I cut my cable or satellite, how am I going to watch live television? For the longest time, I didn't know that know how to do that either. Um, and for the longest time, I just didn't watch live television. Um, but there are many different ways that you can get access to, to live programming. First, one thing that's really important to know is that you can access live TV through a digital antenna. Does anybody have a digital antenna? Oh, a lot of you. Great, wonderful. So I just recently got one, and um, I love it. Um, so a digital antenna can be indoor or outside. And the pricing starts at as little as $6. And it goes to about just under $100, I think. Um, and these are available through Amazon or places like Best Buy. Um, the important thing to note is that in some places, if you live in a rural part of Ohio or if there are a lot of obstructions, it can be important that you know that it might not work, right? You might get a, a digital antenna and it might not work. One resource that you can use to see if where you live actually does get broadcast channels is by going to a website called ant antennaweb.org, which I did. And you can enter your address or say a approximate location to find out if how many channels and what kind of channels you could get to your area. So just to, as an example, I live in Hudson on Ravenna Street. And in Hudson, there are over 55 digital broadcast channels available. This includes CBS, ABC, Fox, NBC, and PBS, among others, and many other local channels or Spanish channels or all of that. So like I said, I, I hadn't tried it until recently, but I was amazed that you know what came to my TV, because my TV supported high definition, it was a high definition video for free. So I, I want to spread the word, because once I plugged it in, I was just amazed that I could be watching the calves live. So. Um, um, only on Sundays, right? So um, uh, that's number one. So number two, for streaming broadcast. So just last year, this has been, uh, there have been a, a couple products that have been recently released that um, I've looked into and I wanted to share with you tonight. The first is something called Sling TV. Has anybody heard of this? Oh, that's good. Good amount, so about 10 people or so. So I didn't really know about it until I started researching this topic. And um, I think it's a pretty pretty valid um, option for streaming broadcast. This is a streaming service that's, a, that's available for as little as $20 a month. Obviously, that's more than the other ones that I was talking about. But this gives you access to 23 channels for live television. This includes ESPN, ESPN2, HGTV, TBS, Food Network, TNT, Travel Channel, Cartoon Network, Disney, CNN, and others. This obviously does not include the traditional broadcast channels, CBS, ABC, NBC, etc. But you can add on subscriptions in addition to the $20 a month 
uh, base. Um, currently, there is a deal if you wanted to sign up for, for Sling TV for three months. They say on their website, I didn't try it, but that you can get a free Roku, a free streaming device if you pay you know, the $60 a month for, or $60 for three months. Um, or if you, is, is anybody a, a T-Mobile customer? Ooh, one person, two people. Okay, as a T-Mobile customer, you get 30% off of Sling TV for 12 months, which can, which can be nice. Um, currently, the, the stream, uh, the Sling TV uh, operates at one stream per, per view. So if you have, say, a TV in your living room and then your daughter is streaming Sling TV up, up in her bedroom, you won't get access to that, okay? So... They've actually just released this year a beta version of a different line of, that you can sign up for. So it's, it's still $20, but it allows multi-stream. Multi um, and it, but again, it might not include all of the same channels. So it's similar, but just some options. That's very, very new. So I don't know too much about it. There are some downsides to Sling. When I first tried it, again, I was amazed. I was getting ESPN. But... Um, there are, there, it does buffer sometimes, so I've had to restart the app sometimes or turn off my TV and then turn it on again. So um, like a lot of the others, it does offer a seven-day free trial, which is what I did, and you might find that it's not for you or you're too frustrated. Um, again, this is just like live television, so it does have commercials. And um, one thing to note, and we'll talk about this later, that this really doesn't give you, although you have ESPN, ESPN2, this doesn't really give you access to local sports, okay? All right, number two is PlayStation View. Has anybody heard of this one? Our IT guy in the back, that's wonderful. His name is Ryan. Thank you, Ryan. Um, so this starts at a little bit more than Sling. It's about $30 a month. It goes up to about $40 a month. But this has a lot more channels. This is 60 plus channels. Um, so it includes a lot of the tr traditional um, networks. Um, I don't know too much about this because I haven't tried it myself, but I just wanted to give you some, a summary of what it, what it is. Um, there are, with, with your subscription to PlayStation View, you do get access to unlimited cloud storage. So if you record something today, it will be available for 28 days. It doesn't mean that you only have unlimited cloud storage for 28 days. It means that from the time you record it, it will be available to you for 28 days. So that can be really nice. It can act as a DVR. Um, and then one thing to note that there are strict restrictions on streaming away from your home network. So you can't necessarily use your login if you go somewhere else. It's mainly to be used at home. And then this, as I said, this is new like Sling. And this PlayStation View is actually not available um, on all devices. It's only available on Amazon Fire TV, Google Chromecast, and as apps on the iPhone or iPad, in addition to if you already have a PlayStation 3 or 4. Um, so again, just an overview of streaming broadcast for you. So we have digital antenna, streaming broadcast. Number three, you can keep basic cable, right? So if you, if you really don't need all of those channels, but you still want news and the traditional networks, it might be a good idea just to think about keeping basic cable. Okay, but we're talking about live programming. What about local sports? This was definitely a huge thing for me, right? I am actually from Connecticut, but I've been in Ohio for 10 years, and I met my husband, and immediately, you know, he was taking me to Indians games and Cavs games and all that, and now I love LeBron. So um, um, I really wanted to be able to see what the deal is with local sports. So for, um, oh, I'm sorry, that was all about live sports, but you knew that. Um, okay, so uh, for major sporting events, say the Olympics or the Super Bowl, an HD antenna will cover you, right? Because um, these are big events and they're, they want everybody to watch them. If you are a fan of ESPN or ESPN2, or you know some sports events are on TNT as well, Sling TV might be a really good option for you. And I'll talk about 
my experience with that in just a little bit. And then you can actually subscribe to certain st streaming services through individual sports organization, say the MLB, NFL, or NBA. But just know that these can be expensive. They can be about $100 or $200 a year. So in addition to all of these other streaming uh, services that you might want to try, you just have to be careful in terms of the price. OK, so we've talked about live sports, but what about local sports, right? So this is still an issue because there are definitely going to be some on what they call on-purpose blackouts because they still want to make money, right? And they want people to watch, and this is how they make their money, right? So um, first, Cleveland Browns. You're, you're pretty good, and again, I just mean in digital antenna there. So available through CBS, right, which you can get with an antenna. So the Indians, sadly, most games are through Sports Time Ohio, which really you cannot... I mean, someone may know more than I do about this topic, but from what I see, it's still very difficult to get live Indians games, right? Because they, they know that you're trying to watch it through something other than what they've decided is the standard. And so um, they won't allow you to do that. However, sometimes if you, if you get streaming video, um, they will have the games available on demand after. But you already know the score, so it doesn't really matter. So um, again, Cleveland Cavaliers, most games through Fox Sports Ohio. So this is a little personal touch for me. Um, my thought process for live sports, I really wanted to watch the 2016 NBA playoffs. Big Cavs fan. So I thought to myself, well, how do I do that? I don't have an antenna. I don't uh, have, I only have Netflix. I don't have cable. What am I going to do? When uh, we just recently moved to Hudson from Oberlin, and um, we lived about a block away from my in laws, and I'm actually very good friends with him, so it's good. Um, we basically, if we wanted to watch live TV, we would either go to a friend's house or go to their house, and it was wonderful that we really didn't think about it. But then we moved to Hudson, and we, we didn't know a lot of people, and we thought, we can't do this. We can't just go to someone's house, right? Um, so we really wanted to figure out how we could stream the playoffs. And my husband, literally, the, the day before the playoffs started, he said, have you figured this out yet? Um, so for me, I thought, well, you know, we're in Hudson. There are just some lovely restaurants that you can go to. And we thought, really, um, it, it was a great idea. We thought, why don't we just go to a, a, a restaurant? They have TVs. But really, you can't go in there and get a glass of water, right? So it would end up being, you know, if it was just $20 or more, and you think about, you know, there are only going to be 16 games in this in the NBA playoffs, right? Because they're going to they're gonna win it all, right? But if there were more than that, obviously, it would be even more money. So we, my solution, I actually did try Sling TV. And once the seven days were up, I really couldn't get rid of it because what I did was I researched where did, did the playoff, where are the playoffs being broadcast, right? And they are, every game of the playoffs, because I checked, is broadcast either on ESPN, TNT, or ABC. They say NBA TV as well, but really they're just those three. And I thought, well, I have ESPN and TNT, great. Sling's great. What about ABC? And I didn't have a digital antenna yet. With your Sling television subscription, you're able to log in to watch ABC. It's a little confusing. Through the Watch ESPN app. So I added both the Sling TV app and the Watch ESPN app to my Roku, and I was able to watch all the games, right? So that's just an example of what you can do. So again, to recap, to stream video, you, number one, must have an internet connection. And again, they say it's five megabytes per second minimum, but really, you should have some more just in case, again, those kids or other, you know, those husbands watching music videos, um, all of that. Number two, you, you have to have a device to enable streaming. Like I said, this could be a smart TV all in one, or a computer, or one of the devices that I mentioned. And then, in addition to that, you need a streaming service, which is either free or paid. So cost. 
I wanted to give you an idea of at least share what my costs are. So I'm a new resident to Hudson, and I had kind of two options, right, for internet. And so I chose Windstream, and I'm getting, I think it's 25 megabytes. It's a deal, you know, for tw 12 months, and I know it's not going to last. But it's 40, $49.99 per month. That doesn't include taxes or the modem I rent and all of that. But that's sort of the base price point. And then in addition to that, I have a Netflix streaming subscription, one screen, and no HD. So we can only watch it on one screen at a time. And I don't do the DVD rental. And then I added the $20 a month Sling TV. Again, this is temporary, so that might go down. Um, and what's really nice about this for both the Netflix and Sling TV, there's no contract. So I don't have to you know, worry about that. If I decide tomorrow that I want to cancel it, I just have to you know, wait for the month to, to be up, and then I'm good. Um, Internet charges, like I said, will probably rise. Or I may decide maybe I don't need a as much, like 25 megabytes per second is, is a lot. So um, we'll see. So um, just to give you a, a resource, there are lots and lots of calculators out there on the web. If you even just Google something like cutting the cord on cable calculator, you'll get something. But I actually like um, something called Slate, the Slate's calculator called Should You Cut the Cord? Um, so you can just Google that if you wanted. I don't know the actual um, address. But this is sort of the example of what it lists. It says, how much is your cable plan with TV and internet? You can put it in there. If you, if you don't have TV, you can just put your internet or you know, your base per month. And then how much would it be with just internet? And then you can just check off any of these if you wanted to try to you know, bundle some of these together. Because really, like I said, although cable companies like to say, we have this deal for you, we have this bundling package for you, it's nice to be kind of more in control. So this is something that, that you'll be able to use. OK, so to summarize, is it time for you to cut the cord on cable? Perhaps. Um, really, I want you to consider a number of questions. First, what kind of viewer are you? Again, are you an active viewer? Are you a passive viewer? Second, is your is internet fast enough? Does it need to be that fast? Um, you have to think about this. And then three, how fast do you want to see your favorite TV shows? Are you able to wait indefinitely for Netflix or waiting for that DVD at the library or showing up in the Target freebie bin or whatever? Um, so are you, are you able to wait for that or not? If you want to watch it live, if you want to watch it that day, um, that's something for you to know. Four, are you a supports fan? I see a lot of calves and Indians and Browns attire, so. Um, and five, how much money do you want to spend? So before we leave tonight, I, I, I want to talk about why care about streaming? Why is this important? So streaming gives you greater control over your entertainment options and your environment. So many consumers are going this route out of frustration, right? Um, but, but really, I want you to know that there are many different things out there for you. There are lots of things available now, and they're continuing to crop up. Like I said, Hulu is going to offer live TV, which is crazy, but it's just happening. So, um, and there's, there's no, I'm not telling you this to go out and buy a bunch of new devices, spend a lot of money. I just want you to know that this is available. And you can do it as slowly as you want to. You can try one out and say, you know, that's not for me. I'm not going to use it. Or if you really like Netflix, then great. Um, and like I said, many of them are available with free trials, which is nice. Um, and another big thing about streaming is that if you haven't noticed, this is making cable companies and satellite TV companies very nervous, right? Because this is really breaking up those big companies. And it's a good thing. There's a lot of technology innovation happening here with streaming. And so it's just nice to be aware of. and. Um, Many of the, you know, much of the tech industry is leaning towards this. They're putting a lot of money into trying to figure out how to do this. And they're listening to consumers, which is a great thing. So um, in your handout, I've listed a lot of resources for you. There are tons and tons of resources that you can use yourself to either look up, you know, the, the latest news about this issue. Um, definitely CNET.com. 
or something like cordcutting.com or cut cable today or Tom's guide like I mentioned those are important and those are a lot of them I used for preparing this presentation um, but then there are also a lot of useful websites for searching for for TV shows or movies if you're concerned you know am I really going to get this TV show or what's on Netflix or Amazon or something like that there are a bunch of sites that are listed in your handout that can be really useful for for searching for those Okay, so thank you so much for coming, and um, I really appreciate being able to, to give this information to you. Um, first, before we get into question and answer, which I, I hope you'll stick around for, um, on the front of your packet, I, I also stapled a half sheet um, for a program evaluation. That's not just important for, for the library or um, what we do here, but it's really important for me to both hear how what this program, you know, why you came or if you came and your questions were answered or if you feel like you have something else that you'd like to hear um, for a program um, in the future. So we do, we do look at those very carefully and we appreciate your feedback. So again, thank you so much. Thank you.